Right, improper fractions and mixed numbers. Uh, improper fractions are also known as top-heavy fractions sometimes. Um, what are improper fractions and top-heavy fractions? Let's, let's talk about that. First of all, here's a proper fraction. Not top-heavy. One-third. What is one-third? Well, here's a pizza. If I divide it into three equal pieces, each piece of pizza is one-third of that pizza. So here's my pizza, and in that side of that pizza are my three-thirds. So three-thirds make a whole, and each of those pieces is one of those thirds. That's the sort of fraction that we're used to dealing with, isn't it? Okay, other fractions you'll have heard of will be a half, a quarter, two-fifths, three-sevenths, and so on and so forth. So that's one-third. That's an ordinary or a proper fraction. What's a top-heavy fraction? Well, this is a top-heavy fraction. Four thirds is a top heavy fraction. Why is it top heavy? Very simple answer. Look at the top number and look at the bottom number. The top number is called the numerator, isn't it? And the bottom number is called the denominator. Well done. So here, as compared to the first fraction, here our numerator of four is bigger than our denominator of three. So in other words, the top number is bigger, or in inverted commas, heavier than the bottom number. So it's top heavy or improper. What does four thirds look like? Well, here's our pizza again. We divide it into thirds again. How many thirds are there in this pizza? There's one, there's two, and there's three. So that whole pizza makes up three thirds. But our fraction here, our top heavy fraction, says four thirds. So for our fourth third, we're going to need another pizza. If we divide that into thirds as well, here we are. One, two, three. We find that four thirds is one whole pizza. <laughs> Beautiful drawing. And one third of another pizza. And this is where mixed numbers come in. Because... Our four thirds could also be said to be one whole pizza here plus one third of a pizza here. And of course one plus a third is one and a third. It's a mixed number. And it's a mixed number because it has a whole number and a fraction in it. It's a mixture of whole number and fraction, hence mixed number. So there we go. This mixed number here, one and a third, it's the same as this top heavy fraction here, four thirds. Hopefully you can see from that picture how that's the case. Let's do another one. Let's think of another top heavy fraction. Let's say, how about seven fifths? How about that one? Seven fifths. Here's a pizza again. Divide it to five parts. One, two, three. Four, five. They don't look even equal parts, but they are, believe me. I know because I measured it earlier. I'm very good at this sort of thing. Two, three, four, five. Five equal parts. Uh, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths. There's five fifths. And we're getting another pizza here, aren't we? Six fifths. Seven fifths, because there are two fifths here. Five fifths plus two fifths makes a total of seven fifths. How else could I describe seven fifths? How many whole pizzas do I have here? Just the one. This one here is complete, isn't it? And what else have I got? In my second pizza, I've shaded in two fifths. So I've got one whole plus two fifths, which is a mixed number, which is one. And two fifths. So we can see here from the picture again, hopefully, that one and two fifths is the same as seven fifths, or if you like, seven fifths is the same as one and two fifths. Let's do one more before we move on. How about twelve over? No, twelve is a bad number. Let's choose thirteen over four, or thirteen quarters, you might say. Thirteen quarters. Here we go. Pizza. Pizza one. One quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. Cool. Need another pizza, don't we, to make 13 quarters? Here it is.
it is. This pizza, hey? Two, three, four more quarters there. Four quarters plus another four quarters makes eight quarters so far. Still not enough. So we need another one. Here it is. One, two, three, and four. So there's four more quarters. Four quarters plus four quarters plus four quarters makes a total of 12 quarters. We're nearly there, aren't we? How many more quarters do we need? We've got 12 already. We want 13. That's right. We need one more quarter. There it is. So there's 13 quarters. Four in the first pizza, four in the second pizza, and four in the third pizza, plus one more quarter in that last pizza. That's what 13 quarters looks like. How about as a mixed number? How many whole pizzas have we got? We've got one here, one here, and one here, plus a quarter of one here. How many whole pizzas is that all together? It's three, isn't it? And a quarter in the last one, making a total of three and a quarter. So 13 quarters is equal to or equivalent to three holes and one quarter. All right. So that's what it looks like when you draw pictures of top of your fractions. And hopefully you can see from these drawings and the explanations that um, that's how top of your fractions can also be described as, as mixed numbers too. But without drawing pictures, is there a way we can turn top heavy fractions or improper fractions into mixed numbers quite easily? Well, there is, yes, in a short answer. Because what we do is we treat our top heavy fraction as a division problem. So really, let's look at 13 quarters as really being 13 divided by 4. Treat that fraction sign, that line in the middle, as a dividing sign. Imagine those two dots are there to make it to divide. And let's call it 13 divided by 4. Because I think you'll see how it works. Ask yourself, how many 4s can you fit into 13? Hopefully you'll understand that you can get 3 4s. 13 because 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals 12. So 3 4s can be fitted into 13 and we have a remainder, a leftover of 1. Don't we? We've used 12, we've got 13, so we have 1 left over. That 1, in the olden days, you might have written like that. You might have written 3 remainder 1. But we're now getting to an age where we don't need to write our remainders as remainders, we can write them as a fraction. We take our remainder 1, and we write it like that, and we write it as a fraction over the number we're dividing by. In this case, we're dividing by 4, aren't we? So we write our remainder of 1 over 4, and there we see that our answer to the question 13 divided by 4 is 3 and 1 quarter. If I go back to our previous page, you'll remember that actually that's what 13 quarters was. It worked out at 3 whole pizzas plus a quarter, 3 and a quarter. So that confirms that we're probably on to a winner there, doesn't it? There we go. Let's do another one. Um, how about 15 halves? 15 halves. Well, let's treat that as a division problem. Let's make it 15 divided by 2. How many 2s can you get into 15? Well, if you know your 2 times table a little bit, you should remember that 7 times 2 is 14. So I reckon we can get 7 2s in there with the remainder of 1. Let's write our remainder there. We'll write it over what? That's right, we write it over the number we're dividing by, which is 2. So our answer will be 7 and 1 over 2, or you might say 7 and a half. Let's do another one. Uh, this time, how about 23 sevenths, or 23 over 7? Remember, we're treating it as a division problem. So we're saying to ourselves, how many 7s can we get into 23? Again, hopefully, you know a little bit about your 7 times table, or maybe your 3 times table. And you know that 3 times 7, or you might say 7 times 3, I suppose, equal 21. So how many 7s go into 23? Three of them do. And if we've used 21, what is our remainder? Our remainder will be 2. Write the remainder there as a fraction over the number we're dividing by. What are we dividing by? We're dividing by 7, so that will be our denominator again. And there's our answer, 3 and 2 sevenths. And that is how you turn a top of your fraction into a mixed number. You divide the top number by the bottom number, the numerator by the denominator, and any remainder you get, you write as a fraction over the number you're dividing by. Let me show you one more, because you don't always have a remainder. 
Here's another top heavy fraction. 15 fifths. Treat it as a division problem. 15 divided by 5. Now, you do know your 5 times table, don't you? 1 5 is 5, 2 5s are 10, 3 5s are 15. So how many 5s go into 15? 3 with no remainder at all. So how would we describe 15 fifths as a mixed number? We just call it 3. There's no fraction after it because there's no remainder. 5 goes exactly into 15 and that can sometimes happen. That's turning a top of your fraction into a mixed number. Question is, can you do it the other way around? Can you turn a mixed number into a top heavy fraction? Well, yes, you can. Let's draw a picture again. Hey, we like our pizzas here. Two and one third. There's two whole pizzas. And the third one with one third in it. So here we go. Can you tell what it is yet? There we go. One whole pizza, another whole pizza. And one third of a third pizza. Two whole pizzas and a third. How many thirds all together? Three thirds here, and three thirds here, and one third here. And three thirds plus another three plus one makes a total of seven thirds. So we can see two and one third is equivalent to, is equal to seven thirds. That's what it looks like the pictures. Is there an easy way of doing it? Yes, there is. Two and a third again. Here she is. Two and a third. Here's the mechanical way of turning that into a top of your fraction so you don't have to draw a picture. Take our whole number two. Question is, how many thirds are there in two holes? We know that one hole has three thirds in it. One, two, three. So, to know how many whole thirds there are in two holes, we'll do two times three, which of course is six. So two holes will equal six thirds. And then we've also got this third here. So we'll add that on and six thirds plus another third makes seven thirds. In simple terms, what you do is you take the whole number two and times it by the denominator three. So it's two times three and you add on your numerator make seven and you write it all over your denominator three. So you times the whole number by the denominator, add on your numerator, could that be any messier? <laughs> write your answer as a fraction over your denominator. Here's another one. Seven and a quarter, you times your whole number by your denominator, which is 28. Add your numerator, which here is one, it does 29, write it over your denominator, which is four. So seven and a quarter is 29 quarters. Here's another one, three and two fifths, times your whole number, three, by your denominator, five, that's 15. Add on your numerator, two, to make 17, and write that over your denominator, five. So three and two fifths is 17 fifths. That's the mechanical way of doing it. Whole number times denominator to add on your numerator. 